Hello everyone and welcome to Canvas and Paint offered by Garden City Arts. My name is Katie Guthrie and today I'm going to be walking you through a really fun, cool mermaid painting. Um, so if you purchase a kit from Garden City Arts, please lay the colors out in the order that you see here, uh, numbers one through six. Make sure you have your brushes handy. You have a cup filled with paint water and of course a paper towel. Another thing you'll want to have is a piece of chalk and the cheat sheet that came in your kit along with your blue canvas um, already painted for you and ready to go. If you have these supplies, you are ready to start painting and we can move forward. Let's get started. All right, so first things first, we are going to start with the darker colors, the darker blues in your kit, and work our way to the lighter blues in your kit. Now, we are gonna do our background first, and then we'll work on some mid-ground elements, and then of course, our mermaid. So color number one is the first guy that you're gonna open. You're also gonna open color number two. You're gonna use these two colors simultaneously to create a vignette. Vignette is where you have dark edges and a lighter center. We're gonna take our biggest wash brush. Biggest brush you have at your station will be, or at your house, will be perfect. Make sure you dip it in paint water, pat it dry, and make sure it's nice and cool and damp to the touch. If you have your brush primed, you're ready to go. We're gonna start with a lot of paint and we're gonna work our way and work our brush up the canvas so that our brush starts to run out of paint. So in those corners, I'm gonna put a heavy layer of this cerulean blue. Now, when I use my brush at its broadest point, I can fill in a lot of space very quickly. Um, if you are picking up like the texture of the canvas, what you can do is dip your paintbrush in water, dip it in paint, and then mix it together on the foam plate. That adds water into your paint and helps it get more fluid. Once you have solid blue corners, you don't wanna leave them like that. That's a really odd transition. You wanna to transition to a lighter color. You turn your brush to its thinnest point and with some water mixed into your paint, that's gonna help you a little bit here. You are going to paint on your canvas and put in these thinner brush lines. Now, your brush line should start to curve around. We're making a little bowl, okay, for our mermaid. So make sure that you are filling in your canvas. You can have it look really PC like this. This is just kind of our light diffusing into the dark blue ocean. And once you're happy with it, you can stop and swirl, tap, and dry your brush. Swirl your brush and paint water, tap it on the rim of the can, make sure you get all of the paint out of it, and then pat it dry. Once you have a clean brush, you're gonna move on to color number two. Now you're going to be mixing paint and water together, once again, on your foam plate, and you're gonna get a brush that's loaded up with this color number two paint and use it at its thinnest point. This is our transition color to help us move from the dark into the lighter sections of our canvas. So remember, we're trying to get kind of a gradient. We're going from light to dark. Now, if you have a dark bottom that creates kind of a bowl shape on your canvas and you're happy with it, you are good to go. Remember, you can always take a step back, go back to the cerulean blue, which is color number one, and add a little bit of extra in there, and then you're good to go. Okay, just like that, we're ready for the next step. Step number two involves color number three, and color number two, maybe just a little bit. This is our lightest blue, and we want it to be in the center of our canvas, it's gonna be kind of a circle. So we're gonna take our paint, mix some water into it, just like before, and then we're gonna start with a circle or an oval in the center of your canvas. Lightest area right here, okay? Now, as you come out, you are gonna follow the curvy lines of your circle. 
Do you see that? So we're not doing straight lines. That will really um, stand out if you do straight lines on this canvas since we're doing curvy lines. And you're gonna do these and bring them all the way up into the corners. When you get down to where you left off on step number one, if your paint is still a little wet, it should blend really seamlessly if you bring it down just a smidge into that area. If it doesn't, well, hey, you can have more paint, it's all good. Just take a little bit of color number two, add it back in and work until you have a nice seamless transition that you are happy with. Okay, so once you have that, you're good to go. Um, make sure that you are cleaning out your brush if you do grab color number two at any point. You don't wanna put color number two in the center of your canvas. You're gonna have to paint over paint. Um, I'm gonna just quickly fill the rest of this in, going all the way up into my edges, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so you should have the background completely filled in with paint. Your underpainting, the blue that we started with, can poke through at times, that's absolutely fine, but the majority of your canvas should be covered. We're gonna move on to color number four, and we're gonna continue our vignette theme. So basically we have dark corners down here, but the corners up there remain fairly light. We're gonna grab a little bit of color number four, not a lot. Make sure you mix some water into your paint for this step, that's very important. And once you have a bit of watered down color number four on your brush, it's bright aqua green, you're gonna put just a tad bit of it in the corners. Just a smidge, you don't need a ton. If you purchase the kit, you have more than enough paint to do this step. Okay, um, if you want to build it up even more, you can add even darker color you just add paint with less water on top of the layers you've already done. So basically that paint, if it has less water in it, it will be more opaque. And there we go. I'm done with my background. Now, before we can move on to the next step, we have to let our paint dry a little bit. So take a break, take a step away, let your paint dry. We'll move on in just a moment. Okay, we are done with the background. Now we're going to move on to the bubbles. And the bubbles can be anywhere. They can be as big or as small as you want. For the bubbles, you start out with color number two, and then you end with white, color number five. So we are going to really quickly throw in some round bubbles with our round brush has a point like a pencil. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can use a shader brush, that's absolutely fine. Uh, the round brush does work better. So I am going to start adding bubbles randomly and they can be anywhere at all. The only thing that you'll want to do is make sure that they are round-ish, okay? You can get away with a lot of things about bubbles, but if they're not round, they're not gonna read bubbles. Now I'm going to fill most of it in, not all of it, and I do want to think about how I'm making these. Straight lines will not make bubbles. Curved lines will make it feel more bubble-ish. So I'm going to add some small bubbles, I'm going to add some big bubbles, until I have some really nice bubbles. If you can hear my dog barking in the background, I apologize. He is a jerk. Okay, so I'm making some pretty nice big bubbles that I think will look really, really cool next to my mermaid. Now I am planning on putting my mermaid in the center, so I am keeping them fairly far away from her. I also want her to look like she's reaching out and touching the bubbles. I might go back in and put another bubble later on down the, um, down the video. Um, but for now, I'm just putting in a few, and they can be kind of tiny. They can be kind of big. Oops. And once you have a few, you're ready to move on to the white paint. 
Now the white paint, I'm going to open up color number five. I'm gonna make sure I have a little bit of water mixed into my paint. And then all I have to do is outline kind of the edges. Make sure you don't have too much water in your paint. Um, too much water, it'll just kind of uh, come out looking kind of weird. You don't have like a line, you have like a, um, a big huge puddle. <laughs> and I just put a little bit of white on the outer edge, a few white lines on the center, and that is it. And I have my bubbles. You don't have to cover up all of the blue. Just cover up a little bit of it. Let some of the blue show through. After all, why would we have painted it if we were gonna just cover it all up? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video and just paint in a few different bubbles and then we'll move on in just a moment. Okay, now that we have our bubbles at the top of our canvas, we're gonna turn our attention to the bottom of the canvas. We're gonna put white away for now and we're gonna whip out color number six, which is a Mars black. When you are painting the seaweed, it's a very, very simple and easy to do if you use your brush effectively. I'm gonna show you how to do that with the round brush really fast. So first, of course, we mix a little bit of water into our paint. You don't have to mix a ton. And you wanna make sure that you have a fairly cleanish brush. So don't have a bunch of paint on your brush, just keep it to the tip of the brush. Now, when we paint in the seaweed, I'm gonna start down low, we can paint it on by changing or varying the amount of pressure we put on our brush. So I'm gonna start with a light, light pressure, and then when I come down here, I'm gonna go thicker, and then I can go lighter, and then I can go thicker, and then lighter. And when you do that, it creates really nice wavy sea, um, seaweed. Now you have to be conscious of um, creating waves and changing your pressure at the same time. You might take a little bit of practice. Don't worry, some of these seaweeds can just be eh, seaweeds. Like, oh, oh, I'll put another seaweed on it and it's fine. You can also put some really light colored seaweeds in the back by adding water to your paint or even mixing a little bit of color number two into your black. These will appear as if they are further away. Okay, um, in the distance and some of them can be really detailed. Others can just be really kind of afterthoughts. And remember the seaweed doesn't have to look exactly the same. You can change it up, make some look really, really thin and wavy and others be a little bit thicker. So have fun with this. I think it's one of the really fun things to learn when you are working with a brush is how to use it effectively. So once you have a few of the light colors in, the light colored seaweeds, and you can do that either by adding water into your paint or mixing a lighter color into your black, you can go to the full black. I am going to speed up the video and add a whole bunch of seaweed. As I'm doing this, I am keeping it down low in the center and then bringing it up higher on the sides, kind of mimicking the vignette of our canvas. I'm gonna speed up the video and keep on painting. All right, we are on our very last step, which is to put in the mermaid and any little fishies you might want to add. Uh, with your mermaid, you do have a cheat sheet inside your kit, and you are more than welcome to use this. If you'd like to draw out your own mermaid or perhaps just focus on like a sea turtle, fish, something like that, you're more than welcome to. To use the cheat sheet, what you need to do is flip it so that her hand is now pointing to the right. Then you chalk up your cheat sheet using your chalk that came in your kit. And once that is completely chalked up, you lay it back down uh, wherever you like in the position that you would like her. I'm gonna put it right there. 
and you lay her in place. Don't move her once you start this process. And you use the back end of your brush to press and apply pressure. Wherever you apply pressure, your cheat sheet is going to leave chalk lines. Okay, it's probably faint in the video, but I can see them. They're coming through just fine. I'm gonna speed up the video, finish my chalk lines really fast, and then show you the next step. Okay, I have transferred my image. I have gone over it with my chalk to kind of make it a little bit easier on myself to see. And now all I have to do is paint in my mermaid and my fish. I am going to show you some tips and tricks and then I'll speed up the video and you just go at your pace. Um, you can always pause the video if you need to. Trick or tip another, number one is to make sure you have lots of water mixed into your paint. We are using color number six. Um, so make sure that you have some water mixed in and make sure you're using the round brush. Trick number two is to outline first. Get yourself a really good outline. If it doesn't look right, you can make adjustments. Um, for instance, if I go in a little bit too uh, close on her tummy, I can take a clean damp brush and I can erase that line away. Okay, clean damp brush will erase it away. You might have to take a paper towel to clean it up a bit, but you can get it erased and off your canvas. Now, after I'm done outlining, then I can fill it in. I start right at the line and I bring my paint inwards. You can switch to a bigger brush for that step. It might make life a little easier. Okay, so that is how we are going to outline our mermaid and then paint it in. I'm gonna do that um, sped up on the video in just a moment. Let's talk really fast about fish. Fish are very simple. You can draw them out in chalk first if you'd like. Uh, if you want a really detailed fish, start with an oval, add a little triangle on the top, add a smaller triangle on the bottom. I like to make my fish have kind of pointed face, but you could keep it round if you prefer. And then add two little fins on the back by basically putting like a curved line onto the back of your fish that curves away from the rest of your fish. And that is how you do a fishy. Okay, so remember you can make them as detailed or as simple as you would like. It's up to you. And don't forget, fish don't very often swim alone. They swim in schools. So go ahead and do that process a few times. Now when you get to fish that are further away, you can get a little bit lighter with your paint by uh, mixing a color into it or mixing water into it to make it appear lighter or, um, sorry, so you want to do that when fish are further away um, and you also want to make them less detailed. I'm going to put a school of fish in this corner right up here and they are going to be just basically ovals with maybe the littlest of hints of fins on the back. Okay, so little tiny ovals. You're going to want to use your round brush use the tip of that brush to make really tiny fish. And once again, I'm making them into a school because fish travel in packs in the ocean. Makes sense. So add as many fish or as few as you want, make them as detailed or as simplified as you want. It'll read fish, you're in the ocean. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video in just a moment and finish all of my fish and my mermaid. I'll stop at the very end and show you how to add just a few more details to your mermaid to make her look even better. All right. Okay, very last thing that we're going to do to our mermaid is to kind of add in a little bit of a hint of, of a face and an arm just so that it's not just this weird silhouette that doesn't really have any form. So to do that you take color number five and color number six and meet the, mix them together to make uh, kind of a medium gray. 
You don't want it to be too terribly light, otherwise it might stand out just a wee bit too much. Now remember, paint covers paint, so don't stress too much. You can always adjust um, later. I am going to add this color on her extended hand and then also along her shoulder. Okay, so if you don't feel like it stands out enough, add more white. If you're like, ah, nailed it, perfect, keep going. I'm going to add just a little bit of white because I did not nail it. And then I'm going to put a curved line for her face. And you don't have to get really detailed. You just want to have the illusion of kind of an outline of her face. You can also put a little bit of this on parts of her hair. As you go, you can add more of the black wherever you feel like you maybe didn't do the greatest job on the first layer. I always have to add two layers with acrylic paint. And then if there's anywhere else that you feel like on the body she needs it, you can go for it and add that highlight. For instance, I like to divide her flippers by adding a little bit of this medium gray and then just extend it onto the tips and again anywhere else you feel like it might just add to your overall silhouette okay that is it I'm all finished with my mermaid and with my overall painting um, I hope you enjoyed painting along today. Come back and see us next month.